How do you view the Indian market? Are you invested there? Is it one of your favorite plays? Uh, before I, I, I answer that question, may I wish you a happy birthday first? Thank you so much. It's <laughs> <laughs> all John Dawson's fault. It's all John Dawson's fault, I'm sure of it. Anyway, please. Okay. Uh, the Indian market, uh, well, we've been underweight for the last six to nine months now. Basically, we found the valuations a bit expensive and also the macro uncertainties, including inflationary pressures and, and the lack of monetary tightening. That, that actually kept us away from the Indian market for a while. But at these levels, and now that the government actually has, or, or the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, central bank has tightened quite a lot, uh, we, th we are looking more favorably at India at the moment. Yeah, well, what would you be looking at, though, specifically? What, uh, is it something which has been beaten down? Or, definitely, know, yes. So, so what are you looking yes, at? Yes, definitely those. Because I think that the consumer and the healthcare names are quite expensive now. The defenses are expensive. But telecoms, on the other hand, a uh, lot of scandal, a lot of competition there as well. I mean, huge Indeed. amount of competition. Indeed. Uh, it's not one of our favorite sectors, I must say. Um, I think that one has to go back to the banking sector and, some com and, and, and maybe some industrial names, which have been beaten down quite a lot. Yes. Let's uh, take a look at, as well at, uh, at China. Do you buy there? Because, I mean, we've not seen the market do very much. We've got the interest rate hike come through uh, the other day. Now, that, w that was a surprise. Uh, do we have any more, and how does it play out in your strategy? We think that uh, interest rate hike could continue. Uh, over the next uh, six months for the rest of the year. But we don't think that it will be very aggressive. We think that maybe another 50 basis points or so to come. Uh, but uh, in terms of the uh, reserve requirement ratio increase, we think that that will actually um, be reduced quite. Oh, uh, really? Uh, no, no, it will not be cut. But uh, no further It'll be you know, kept on uh, uh, yeah, in increase. Because I think that the liquidity, the excess liquidity, in the banking system in China is quite tight. Yeah, I mean, uh, Tomasek, for instance, uh, came out the other day saying they were selling down uh, their stake in two banks in China. And that mm -hmm. was, uh, what sort of message did that send out for you? I think that is in the they say normal... Re, they're saying it's rebalancing their Chinese well, well, I portfolio. Think, I, think, I think to a certain extent. I think that, uh, you know, a few years ago, obviously, uh, in the uh, 2008 crisis, um, I think that they did come out and say that perhaps we did have too much financial exposure. But the financials have recovered quite strongly since 08. So I, I think that it's, it's a normal part of uh, a portfolio management, a prudent portfolio management activity to actually take some profits where they can and rebalance the portfolios. So I, I think that it's normal uh, activity. For you, which is the most attractive market to be in at the moment? The most attractive ones? I think that uh, you know, one has to look at China. China is very attractive at the moment. It's trading on 10.2 times PE. There's a good reason for that. Um, yes, they, there are good reasons for that. But also, uh, I don't think that the retail money is, uh, is into that market as yet. And the second... Is that down to because they saw house prices go up and when the, the market took such a hit a couple of years ago, the people have, you know, once bitten, twice shy? Correct, correct. I think that they've been... They've been, um, they've been uh, staying away from, uh, from the stock market and maybe they have been going more to Macau. So maybe, you know, when they you return to the Asia sense. market, <laughs> I'm not quite sure about that, but they seem to have more fun. Yes, no, yes. I'm not sure about that. No, no, yes. <laughs> Let's just uh, talk a little bit about uh, China, of course, just what we were talking about before. People talking yeah. about a hard landing and then in the next breath they say they think that's going to be 8% growth. Now, that doesn't strike me as being a hard landing or a landing at all. Yes, I, I think that, uh, I mean, from our viewpoint, that's pretty ludicrous, actually, because uh, I think that a number of economists are used to China growing at 10% plus. So uh, whenever uh, they think that it could grow at 8%, they start to get really frightened. But I think that what they have forgotten about is that China has become the second largest world economy. And so for China to grow at 8% is still fantastic. And in fact, we prefer China to grow a little bit more slowly because then it will be able to control inflation better. And then we have a better stock market to work with. Yeah. Because, you know, strong growth over the last 12 months doesn't generate very good stock market gains. Well, we've seen that it doesn't have any bearing with fundamentals. So we've seen that before in other Absolutely. parts of the world. So, you know, uh, this, uh, but you've got to say one thing here, which is that's the official growth rate. Yes. And unofficially, it could be even higher than that. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. I, I, we think that um, GDP growth for this year will end up somewhere like about 9 to 9.5%. And for next year, we hope that it, they will be able to achieve something like 8.5 to 9.5 as well. Because that will 
bring inflation a little bit more under control and, and so the PBOC doesn't have to tighten monetary policy as much. Right. Let's uh, also just uh, take a look at the, the risks ahead apart from just uh, inflation here as well. And inflation, uh, they, when Joe Powell said they could, they could uh, control it and the medicine was working, but they do have a debt issue as well. And it was curious that on his trip uh, to Europe he said, oh, we're here to help, but uh, shouldn't they be getting their own house in order first? Yes, there are, there, are, there are a number of issues. Yes, yes, you're quite right. I mean, obviously, the banking, uh, the, 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 the debts to the local government authorities is well known. And I think that a lot of estimates have come out over the last few days, including you know, from CBRC and, and then from, uh, from Moody's and so on and so forth. So obviously, that is an issue which they are dealing with at the moment. And this, the, the second one is, I mean, you refer to the, uh, the offshore debt or, or some of the debt to, you know, to Southern European uh, governments. Obviously, the, um, the authorities do own some of that debt. So they do have to make a point that, you know, we, we along with the ECB, you know, will try to help you to sort it out. Because I don't think that anyone wants a default situation on their hands. Because if Greece were to default, then maybe some other southern European nations will also default as well. And that would be a disaster. In Thanks. the short term. In, in the, the short term.